Hey everyone, it's Alex the Code Wolf here, and today we're going to be talking about a brand new development tool from Microsoft called the Azure Developer CLI. Now, you might be wondering, why do we need this product? Isn't there already the Azure CLI? And yes, you'd be correct, there is an existing CLI, but some developers find this tool to be a little bit too granular or require too many different commands just to get up and running. So say you're working on a brand new project and you just wanna create a template and quickly provision resources and deploy that out to Azure to start working and proof of concepting. Well, that's certainly possible with the CLI and it's not that difficult, but the Azure Dev CLI takes things a step further and bundles up some common steps and stages into some easy workflows. You can read more about that on the Microsoft Developer blog, and it goes in depth about some of those workflows here. So the Developer CLI is built with these main stages in mind. So we have the init stage where we create our application template and our files. And then we have provision to create the resources in Azure to host those or to host our project. And then finally we deploy it and monitor it and so on. Now in this video, we're going to look at these first three stages and we're gonna see how the developer CLI makes this very easy to do. Now, in order to get started with the developer CLI, we first have to install it. Right now, this developer CLI does have a dependency on the main Azure CLI, but that's supposed to go away in future releases. But for now, you will need to have that installed along with local Git installations and the GitHub CLI. So in order to install the developer CLI, assuming you, you have these uh, prereqs installed up here, we just have to copy uh, this command here. And I find this easiest to do through PowerShell if you're on Windows. So just copy this command and then you can paste it in here and hit enter. Now I already have this installed, but it'll still go through this little process here. And once that finishes, you'll have it on your computer and you're ready to go. Now I actually find this tool easiest to use through VS Code because this allows us to browse the project and run commands at the same time but you can certainly do all of this just through the command line. However, I've created this empty folder here and we can right click to open this with code and this will give us a more rich environment to work with the developer CLI. So once you have Visual Studio Code open here, the next thing you'll wanna do is install the Azure Developer CLI extension. So if you search for Azure Developer CLI, uh, that should show up here and I already have it installed, but just make sure you go ahead and install that. Make sure to also install the Azure account extension so you can log into Azure through the CLI. And some of these other Azure extensions are helpful as well, but we don't have to worry about those at the moment. And once those are in place, uh, make sure you also log into Azure. Um, so you can do that with the AZ login command. And if you hit enter, uh, that'll open up a browser and prompt you to sign in. But I'm already signed in, so let's just go back to Visual uh, Studio Code here. There is also a way to do this with Visual Studio as well, um, if you enable some preview features, but I prefer VS Code for this type of flexible work. So once you have the CLI installed and the extension set up here, uh, the easiest way to work with the developer CLI is through the command palette. So if you hit Control Shift P, and then you just search Azure Developer, you can see all of the commands that are available. Now, the first one we have here is just called up, and this actually further bundles the different commands of the developer CLI into one easy to use command. But we'll look at that later. I actually wanna go through a few stages here so that we can see what exactly is happening behind the scenes. So let's choose Azure Developer Init for right now. And this will ask us what template we want to use. The Azure Developer CLI is based around templates. And the whole point of this is that you could have a node project with a MongoDB backend, or you could have a .NET project with a SQL back, uh, or a, a SQL database. And you can create these templates and put them out in GitHub and then make them available to the developer CLI. So when we choose one of these, it will clone down that project. And that project includes all the necessary configurations for the developer CLI to deploy resources out to Azure and so on. Now, since this was just released, there's a handful of templates available, but more are coming every day. And I'm a .NET developer by trade, so I'm going to pick this C Sharp Cosmos uh, SQL template. So I'll grab that quick. And you can see it's downloading that template. And it's going to ask us for an environment name. Now, just call this whatever top-level name you would like for this project. 
This will translate to your resource group in Azure and some other uh, resources and folder names. So I'll just pick something like uh, the Code Wolf um, and hit enter and give that a second. And it's going to ask us which location to use in Azure. Uh, remember, this corresponds to geographic uh, regions around, in this case, the United States. But just pick whatever works for you. I'm going to pick East US. And then you can pick a subscription. And I have a couple different ones to choose from, but just pick whatever one you want to create this in. And then hit Enter. And now this is going to uh, go ahead and start to um, initialize our project with uh, certain configuration files. So you can see over on the left, if we explore our folder structure, there's a few different folders that we want to make note of. One is just the source folder, which includes the web front end for our project, which uh, in this case is written in JavaScript, but the back end is in uh, C Sharp and .NET. So you can see this is a simple to-do list. Um, and we're going to deploy this out to Azure and see how that works in a moment. So there's our source code. Now there is also our GitHub uh, workflow file here written in YAML. So this is our GitHub Actions uh, file, which controls all the configurations for deploying through GitHub Actions. And then we have some other folders here as well. There's an infra folder here, um, and this contains BICEP files. So BICEP is a language that helps us with infrastructure as code uh, tasks in Azure. So we can declaratively define our resources and then run those BICEP templates to create things in Azure. You don't really have to worry about all that right now. I'm just letting you know kind of what exists in this template when you uh, pull it down. There's also some tests in here um, and some other usual suspects for a development project like this. Now that we have this project locally on our machine, the next thing that we want to do is actually create the resources in Azure that are necessary to host a project like this and for it to run out on the web. So to do that, we can go back to our command palette and this time we can choose the Azure Developer Provisions uh, task. So remember, each of these Azure Developer tasks correspond to sort of a different stage of the development process. So now we're going to provision our resources. So I'll choose that task, and it's going to start executing that in our command line. So let's just give that a moment. And you can see it says creating Azure resources. And depending on which template you pick, this can take um, a short amount of time or longer. Uh, it just kind of depends on how uh, or what needs to get created out in Azure, but it will give you kind of nice status updates. And in my experience, this goes fairly quickly, uh, but we'll just pause here for a moment for that to finish. So after a few minutes, you can see that this finished successfully. Now for me, this took about three to five minutes, so don't worry if it does take a bit of time, but it was certainly nothing crazy. It completed fairly quickly. And it also gives us this helpful URL that we can control click on, and this will launch us out to Azure. So just sign in. And this will take us to the finished uh, deployment. But the easiest way to see everything that was created is actually to click on resource groups, and then just look for the resource group that has the same name as that environment name that you uh, selected when you first started running these commands with the dev CLI. So for us, that's this CodeWolf resource group down at the bottom. So if we click and go into that, we can see that a lot of different resources were created for us. We have an app service for our API and one for our web, ed, our web front end, uh, some application insights that will help with monitoring, and of course our Azure Cosmos DB account, and that will store all of the, uh, the data for our app. We also have some other items in here like the app service plan to wrap those app services and some log analytics. But don't worry if you don't understand what every single one of these pieces is. Now, if you want to see uh, if the app is actually running, you can click into the web app service here. And from this page, once this loads, um, it might take a second the first time, but we can click on browse and you can see our app is running and it's waiting for our content. Well, in this case, our content is that project template that we downloaded. It's what lives in our source folder over here. So this takes us to kind of the next stage of a typical development workflow, which would be to deploy out to our dev environment. So for that, we can use another Azure Developer CLI command. So if we go back to our command palette and just type Azure uh, Developer again, you can see there's a deploy command. So let's choose that, and it'll say executing task azd deploy. 
And this is going to package up our project over on the left and deploy that out to those resources that we created. So this will take another minute or two, uh, but this should go faster than creating the resources. So just give it a moment to create that package and finish the deployment process. So once that completes, we should see these deployment messages. And of course you could click this link to go out there again, but I'll just switch back over to our tab here. So this is what we had before. And now if we refresh this, now we have a to-do application. This is the sample app that we looked at, and here we see our front end, but this is actually wired up to a database as well. So if I were to add an item here, such as test item, and hit enter, you can see that actually pops into our list, and we have a nice little app that we can use to manage these to-dos. And I can put in another one, and if I were to refresh the page, uh, this is actually being persisted into our database. This isn't just in our UI with the JavaScript. This is actually hooked up to Cosmos and everything, which is really cool. So we've essentially gone from having nothing to installing the CLI and downloading a template to-do project, provisioning resources, deploying out to there, and even testing our app in only 10 or 15 minutes. And that's really the power of this developer CLI. You could of course do this with the regular CLI or a host of other different ways, but this is meant to just streamline those common development scenarios. Now, if we go back to VS Code, there's a couple other items that I want to talk about here. First, in order to avoid unexpected or unwanted costs, we'll of course want to delete those resources if we're just messing around with this. Some of these templates can create a lot of resources and some of them can be expensive and add up quickly, particularly databases. So just be careful with these costs. One easy way to uh, delete all these resources is to actually just use the command, um, it's called azd down. And this will go out and delete that whole resource group and everything we just created. So I'll run that and this will take a moment to delete everything. So if you wanna do the same, just go ahead and um, confirm here with a yes, and it'll say that it's deleting Azure resources. So just give that a moment to finish. So once all that's been deleted, let's repeat this whole process, but see how much faster this can go still using the Azure developer up command. So if we choose that from our command palette, um, this will again prompt us to choose a sample project. And I'm just gonna choose the same one again for comparison. So this C Sharp Cosmos template. And when I pick that, it's gonna ask for an environment name again. And we'll call this the Code Wolf Up, just for uh, comparison so we can tell the difference in Azure with the resource group names. And let's press Enter. And then we can choose our location again, and then choose our subscription again. And now this is actually going to complete all three of those stages we looked at at the same time. So you can see it's already creating our Azure resources, whereas before we had to explicitly say the uh, provision command or the AZD provision. So this is also going to actually deploy everything after it creates those resources. So this is a little bit crazy in how uh, efficient this is, and it might be a little too streamlined for some people, but it's a really interesting and cool feature that you can essentially pick any template out there that's available through uh, the Azure Developer CLI, and then just run the up command, and it will actually pull down that project and create all the necessary resources and deploy this out to Azure and give you a working app all in one command. Um, if you've worked with Azure a lot in the past, uh, this might be a welcome change because a lot of these tasks could be a little bit tedious or require manual work and multiple steps to get going. I also want to remind you that this is primarily just for development flows. If you're building out production workflows, you're of course going to set up more robust CI CD uh, pipelines and just have a lot more process around this but this is a great tool and option for just getting started building some type of app in Azure. And I'm excited to see what kind of templates people come up with, and there's so many different variations that we could use this dev CLI for. So I'm just gonna give this a moment to complete, and when it finishes, we can verify that it was successful. All right, so once that finishes, we can again click on this link to launch out to Azure, and just make sure to sign in quick and then navigate back to our resource group. And you can see down at the bottom, we have this new one called up. So I'll create that, or I'll click on that. And then if we go to our web again, we can again browse to that. And again, we have our deployed and completed application. 
So back in VS Code, there's a couple other things I want to mention very quickly before we wrap up. Now at this point, you're going to want to start developing and making changes to the app. Well, once you've made progress, you're going to want to redeploy. And there's two ways to do that. One is to run the azd up command again, and it will skip past recreating all those resources and just redeploy. There is a bit of lag to that command as it figures out that the stuff is already created. So another option is to just use the uh, azd uh, deploy command, and this will just repackage your app and deploy it out there and only take care of that stage. As soon as you've finished a new feature or you've made progress, just feel free to run that command and everything will get pushed out to Azure. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that this just gives you a general sense of what's possible with the Azure Developer CLI. And like I said, I'm gonna to try to follow this up with some more in-depth videos, such as working with uh, the monitoring and pipeline configurations, as well as uh, taking a closer look at some deployment strategies and some of the things involved behind the scenes here. So look for those videos soon, and thanks for watching here at The Code Wolf.